Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. Welcome back to a later than normal edition of KSO Today, which of course is brought to you by both People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. I wanted to wait today until after we had a basketball press conference with Rap, which wrapped up maybe two hours ago, was completed, uh, and to give the Jake Ruby video some time to just sit on the channel by itself before I dove into this January 28th, 2020 version of KSO Today at KSIT Online. No Derek Young today. Appreciate the job he did on it yesterday from the hotel on his phone. And we were actually in Westminster, Colorado at that point. So he did a fantastic job. I really believe that. He's going to start doing more of these to where you're going to start hearing DY do maybe one or two a week. Flanders is going to take over Fridays and they'll be ridiculous. I'll still do a couple a week. Um, this is something we've really enjoyed. I'm going to kind of, kind of continue to grow here at KS. So first thing I want to talk about, of course, and you see it all over the site, uh, was our trip to Colorado this past couple of days to see Jake Rubley, the four-star rated, you know, Rivals 250 quarterback commitment for K-State out of Highlands Ranch, Colorado, right outside of Denver. We've got the full video up about 13 minutes long, 14 minutes of, of D.Y. And, and Jake Ribley having a really, really insightful conversation. I was so impressed, honestly, with both of them. Flando put a ton of work into that video. I have a little photo gallery up that's not as fun as any of that stuff. D.Y. is going to work on a story if you'd rather read that stuff than have to watch it all and give you a sense of what he learned. And there was a lot that was learned there. But Jake Ribley was fantastic, incredibly charismatic, incredibly willing with his time. The school was great to us. It was so easy. Um, everyone made it so easy for us. So I really appreciate that. If you haven't watched it yet, I think it's worth it. I know sometimes I see a video on YouTube or whatever, and it's 13 minutes long, and I think I'm not watching that. But Jake Rubley shares an awful lot in that video, and you get a chance to meet and learn You know this young, this young man who's eventually uh, potentially going to be your quarterback at K-State. So I think it was fascinating. I think it was really good work by those guys. I appreciate their effort. I hope you like it too if you've, if you've watched it. Like I said, I did come back from a Bruce Weber press conference a couple of hours ago. That video is up, of course, on the site, the entire thing. If you want to see all of Bruce Weber's quotes, we already have that up. I also have all of Mike McGurl's press conference from today up. So if you don't want to hear my recap and instead want to watch it yourself, that's absolutely fine. They're both up to watch. A couple of notes I want to share from the Bruce Weber presser. Uh, no decision really made if Cartier Jada is returning to the starting lineup or not. Um, but if you watch the video and listen to it, I, I, he doesn't talk like a guy who's putting Cardi back in the starting lineup anytime soon. Uh, he'll still play a ton of minutes. He'll still play starter minutes. Um, I would be surprised if there's a shift back into having Cardi A. Jada in the starting lineup after, after that contest and for Oklahoma tomorrow night in Manhattan. I asked specifically about Casey Eziagu, the UTEP transfer and how he is doing. Uh, you can again see that whole quote on the video. I've also tagged it on the board to where if you hit play from where I set it up, you'll just see him talk about Casey Eziagu and nothing else. Um, praised how hard he practiced, that he practiced hard enough last week that he, in Bruce Weber's words, made one of the other bigs, quote, quit. Um, you know, meaning quit the drill, more or less, not want any more of Casey Eziagu. Bruce, you know... Didn't want to overly praise Casey. So, of course, he mentioned that, hey, Casey's fresh. These guys have been playing basketball for quite a while, so that's probably part of it. But he praised, he calls him the tallest player on the team, the longest player on the team. He does have a 7-1 wingspan. Um, really praised his athleticism. Talk about how he runs the floor very, very well, very hard. Thinks he's good in the screen game. This isn't, you know, some five-star sure thing um, who's going to take over next year. Uh, this was a guy who didn't put up monster numbers at UTEP as a freshman, so there's certainly work to, to be done. He will be just a sophomore next year, but he is somebody that if you're looking, you know, for someone who's going to step in for some of those minutes next year that get created by McCall Wayne's departure or any other departures, I don't think Casey Eziagu is somebody to forget about. Probably as good of a chance that he's an impact guy next year as maybe even like a Davion Bradford, who we'll talk about later. So both will play a bunch, but a lot of praise um, for Casey Eziagu today from Bruce Weber. Uh, some questions asked about recruits. I thought was great and some praise given there, both specifically around Stelton Miguel, who had a really big win and performance last night, both as an individual and for his team. Grant Flanders has tweeted about that and put a little bit on the side about that. So you can check that out, of course, but a really big performance for him you know, last night, and he's played really, really well. Weber, I don't, I don't want to misquote him, but I think more or less said Selton's already, you know, better than he kind of ever would have expected um, and has really, really improved even since he signed with K-State, which is true. 
And leads me to my next point, as there has been a little bit of shifting in the class of 2020 Rivals 150. Rivals did some some reevaluations. I will say, I get the joke, you know, about Rivals is against your school or Rivals knocks, you know, knocks scores down. Uh, K-State basketball, they are pretty kind to. If you follow the rankings and how it works, it's a lot more ups than it is downs for K-State basketball. Selton Miguel moves into the top 100. He is now the 97th ranked recruit in the country. So not only has Bruce Weber thought he's exceeded expectations and played way better his senior year than even he thought, Rivals, Eric Bossy, those types agree, and they've now got him as a top 100 player. Another player to see a significant jump was Davion Bradford. I mentioned earlier, the seven-footer out of St. Louis gets a fourth star. Still a 150 member, of course, but no longer a three-star. He's now a fourth star. That means three of the four commits in this class are four-star players. Davion Bradford, Nigel Pack, and Selton Miguel. The next one, Luke Kasubke, took a minor dip in the rankings but remained in the 150, still a three-star like he was before. He's the fourth commit. Um, Again, Selton Miguel was the guy that Weber praised a lot today, had a big game last night. You know, Rivals really likes him. Flanders loves him, of course, and watches more of him than anybody thinks the world of him. And Bruce Weber, I think, truly believes they've landed a Jim, you know, who was already a four-star kid and highly recruited, um, but somebody who was probably a little under-recruited, under-recruited for how good he was and has become at this point and who keeps improving. It feels similar to me, you know, to Dejuan Gordon, who started last year, I mean, significantly lower than Selton Miguel in the rankings. He finished way higher than Miguel. I think he finished in the mid-70s and Miguel's in the 97 right now. But he's having a similar rise, you know, to Dejuan Gordon. He was always seen as a good recruit, but you kind of wondered why weren't more schools in on him? Why wasn't his ranking higher? And then the ranking exploded. You know, more schools would have been interested. And K-State, I think, got fortunate with Dejuan Gordon. They probably have with Selton Miguel, too. I think it makes sense after talking about that to announce our next KSO recruiting trip. It's not going to be a one-time thing or a one-off. We'll be doing this not all the time, not every month, but every so often when it feels like a good idea for us and worth the time and the effort, and it usually is. Uh, we will be heading to St. Louis on February 19th and 20th to watch that newly minted four-star Davion Bradford play in person, as well as fellow commitment St. Louis member product, whatever you want to call it, and Rivals 150 member Luke Kasubke. And back-to-back nights in St. Louis. I know we'll watch one of them. I want to say it's Kasubke on Wednesday, Bradford on Thursday. Doesn't really matter. It could be flipped around. We're going to see them both. They don't play against each other, so we're going to stay two nights and watch them both. Also, a ton of recruits, you know, in the town of St. Louis for this class, for future classes. We will go meet and watch them, too, if possible. We'll have a, well, not if possible, we're going to do it. We're just trying to decide where to spend our time, who to spend our time with, what schools to go to. If we can hit up Vashon, we absolutely will. If we can see Vashon and still make it to those other two games, we're going to do that. But there'll be a lot of kids in St. Louis for us to see, and we're really looking forward to do it. Um, the Rubley trip was a lot of fun and I think it really showed us how reasonable it is to make, you know, a one day trip back and forth somewhere that's no within driving distance to sit down and meet one of these, one of these young men who's committed to Kansas state, really learn about him and hopefully, hopefully entertain some people and teach some people who, who watch the videos or read our site about it. So we appreciate that opportunity. We're going to do it. We're going to do it more going forward for sure. We'll continue to go to as many camps as we can for football. We may try to add basketball to that as well. Um, we want to continue to raise the bar, um, for the recruiting coverage we're able and fortunate enough to provide for you all. So that's going to wrap it up. A relatively short edition of KSO today. We'll have the Oklahoma game tomorrow, of course. Preview and prediction from KSU underscore fan coming and then full coverage throughout the evening of that Oklahoma game. I know we have more recruiting coverage on the way from Derek Young, who will be riding on Jake Rubley in that trip that we had. Grant Flanders will keep us up with the basketball, of course. So Oklahoma game coverage galore and more recruiting as well. So thank you very much for listening to KSO today on this Tuesday, January 28th. We'll be back tomorrow for another edition of KSO Today.